Hey, so when I decided to make one video a week every week of the year for 2021, I didn't realize that my videos would be so boring. How much detail do you need? Do you want to see me need pasta for a long time? Or do you want like a TikTok, you know, like set to the Black Eyed Peas music or something? So I'm going to go back and just kind of re-record some commentary, I guess, throughout this video, just to make it not so boring and terrible. Oh, I don't know. I'm just trying stuff. All right, guys, I've never done this before. Just seeing what sticks. It's not easy. For some people, it's easy. It's not easy for me. I'm not great at this. These videos have almost completely taken the fun out of cooking for me. So we'll see what happens. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be making butternut squash onion lodi. Gross. This is one of my favorite dishes that I make. I say every dish is my favorite. On Instagram, I make it all the time. It's a fresh uh, pasta ravioli. Onion lodi is just the shape of, of ravioli and um, it's probably my favorite. There's just not a lot of waste. As in not a lot of wasted extra pasta dough when you're making the pasta shapes, which you would only know if you made a lot of fresh pasta. I should have clarified. And it looks harder than it is, so it's kind of impressive, even though it's pretty easy. Bragger. Um, this is a dish that I actually learned from Tom Colicchio. Show off. Personally, in the kitchen at his restaurant, Craft in New York City. It was really cool. We did a, a cooking class with him. Um, and uh, this is one of the things he showed us. It's on their menu, it's delicious. So I would like to share with all of you now. Um, check it out. Let me know what you think. Oh, speed it up. You can also do this process in a KitchenAid, but you didn't come to my channel to watch me use my KitchenAid. Don't forget where you put your ring. This is full Italian grandma right here. Getting bored, maybe this watch reveal will be more exciting. Between the 14,000 and the 14,010 is that the 14,000 has a smooth bezel where the 14,010 has an engine turn be uh, bezel. But really both great models, you know, 89 to 2007. Um, the Air Caden continues to be a, you know, somewhat polarizing piece at 34 millimeters. It kinda was. This could have been edited down, huh? Yeah, I needed this for a solid 15, 20 minutes. All right, this is kind of important. Here I'm showing you how to do a proper need. Proper need? A proper need. That's what I'm showing you. So you push it away, turn it one quarter, turn, push it away, repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, a couple tips. So I'm using bread flour for this. It's called double O flour. Um, it's finer and it gives you, uh, it develops gluten a little bit better. So it gives you a better texture for your pasta. If you have all purpose flour, that works uh, great as well. But Are you sure about if that? If you find double O bread flour, it's the best. Um, and with this, what we're wanting, we're looking for a smooth ball on the outside that springs back when you push it. So I'm, I'm pretty much there. I just dusted it with a little bit extra on the top a flour because it was kind of tacky. And as it sits and rests in the fridge, um, it'll kind of, the moisture will penetrate through the, Hydrate. Through the, the ball and it'll get a little wetter than it feels right now. Hydrate. So um, it's better to be a little bit on the dry side at this stage because once you wrap it up and put it in the fridge, um, again, it's gonna hydrate a little more than it is right now, but we're almost there. Always slap your dough. All right, I think we're good. See. When you push it, it kind of springs back. That's what you want. Uh, so we're gonna wrap this up, put it in the fridge. Um, I'm actually gonna probably put it in overnight because uh, I'm running out of light and I will do this tomorrow. Um, but you can refrigerate it wrapped 
up for a day, maybe a day and a half. Um, but it does need to rest for at least 20 to 30 minutes before you move forward at this step to let the gluten relax and it will be much easier to rule out. Always slap it. So once this is really nice and soft, like I did about an hour at 375 degrees. Uh, we're going to put it into a pan and add a little bit of uh, stock to it, some chicken stock or vegetable stock, whatever you want, uh, and then kind of mush it up mush and it up? cook it down until Could all the moisture amateur? cooks out so it's pretty dry. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but we're adding stock and then reducing it all the way down. Reducing means you're just cooking it down, boiling it, simmering it, getting rid of all the liquid, evaporating it. Let's cook all that stock out. It's just going to give it a savory flavor and make sure it's not too uh, sweet. Getting there. Now that this is all cooked out, it's pretty much dry. I'm going to let it cool off. I'm going to put it into a piping bag. If you don't have a piping bag... But why wouldn't you have a piping bag? Um, you can use a, a Ziploc bag and just cut the corner off. Uh, but these are cheap and uh, make it way better. So look for a piping bag somewhere. Amazon. Come on. Hey, okay, that's free promotion, Amazon. All right, this has been resting actually overnight. As you can see, it's much more hydrated now. It doesn't bounce back quite as much. It's softer. Uh, this was in the fridge. You want to let it sit out at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes just to soften up a bit. So we're going to go ahead and roll this out. I'm going to do it on uh, my KitchenAid. I also have a, a hand crank pasta. Either works fine. A um, couple of crucial things when rolling out pasta. All right, so you get, get a piece. So a very important step is called laminating. Laminating, this is important. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the first one a couple times. And then we're going to fold it over itself and go through a couple times again, fold it over, do that. So you're really making layers. Like you're making a croissant. You're kneading the dough even more. And that's going to give it a really nice uh, al dente-ish. Um, texture. I mean, fresh pasta is never going to be truly al dente, but it'll give it a good, a good bite. So you can see we folded it in thirds. Go through again. And do that again. Now I'm just going to run it through each number at least twice. All the way down until this goes up to eight. I'm gonna go probably to seven for these raviolis. And dust with flour as needed. This is a little bit on the wet side. Now we're gonna fill it up, make some onion lodi. Okay, here comes the action. This part's cool. I'm just gonna mist this with water. Now we're gonna go through and we're just gonna pinch down um, about an inch and a quarter length se segments. And we're gonna clean off. We're gonna leave about a quarter of an inch uh, at the end of the shape and clean off this excess. And now, I'm just gonna separate them. That's a good sound, isn't it? There you have it. Put on a squash on your loading. Look at that. Little perfect pillow shape. How delicious does that look? That's it. To finish these pastas, I'm gonna boil up some water here and then I'm gonna, I just serve them in a bermonte, which is uh, water that you whisk cold butter into and it makes kind of a velvety sauce and then some parm on top. Um, it's delicious. 
and it's easy and uh, I'll show you how to do it right now. Starts by bringing some water to a simmer, then we're just gonna whisk in cold butter. These pasta cook in about 60 to 90 seconds. Fresh pasta cooks really quick. Always finish with parm. Pretty delicious. That's it. <laughs> I say that's it as if I didn't just spend two full days making pasta. Well, not two full days, but two day process. Doesn't have to be, but it was. That's one of my favorite dishes. I make it all the time. It's something I probably would have never tried if I didn't um, try it at that cooking class. It doesn't sound like something I would typically order. That is but true. But it is really delicious. It's an excellent appetizer, first, first course. Um, it's just great all around and it's a big crowd pleaser. Try it out. Thanks Tom Colicchio for showing me the ropes. I appreciate it. Was this any better? I kind of feel like it was worse. Um, I know that it was more work, so I kind of hope it's not better because I don't want to do this every time. Anyways, thanks for watching.